It's time for a classic again. One that is slightly overhyped if you ask me, but hey, what do I know? Well, what I do know is that this game is about a bandicoot named Crash. I wonder where that name came from. Is it because he crashes into things? Could it be that obvious? No, 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 no. That can't be it. So, in an era where 3D platforming was rather new and Sony had to compete with the giants that was Sonic and Mario, you bet Crash Bandicoot was a game of importance. And you can see that right away because, well, there's no story exposition at all. Well, there is. If you stay on the main menu long enough, you'll see a cutscene which kinda shows you how Crash escapes from Dr. Cortex who's doing experiments on him. But he kind of leaves his girlfriend behind, so now he's gonna go back for her, even though he just escaped. But he's heroic and shit. But any normal person doesn't get to see that and gets thrown right into the world map. And I must admit, the world map is kind of the best part of this game. I don't know if that's a good thing. I think it's not. But then again, this world map is great. I just wish you could identify the boss levels a little bit better on it. You get placed right into the first level and there you go. Have fun trying to figure everything out. This stage gives you enough playroom to figure out most gameplay elements by the end of the stage. Jumping, spinning and the whole thing about breaking boxes. The aquaca masks. And if you don't screw up, you even get a chance to get three of them in the first stage already. The one thing you may not get to see though is the chance of getting a gem. You see, in every stage you can get a gem if you destroy every single box in stage without a single death. By the way, I've been talking about boxes. Of course there's just normal boxes and then there's crates which you have to jump on multiple times, but there's also TNT boxes, which you have to trigger and then run away before they explode. But we can't make this too easy now, can we? No, because of the way this game renders objects, you need to stay relatively close to the TNT box. At least you need to hear it explode. Otherwise, it won't count as an actual box being broken. If you die as much as one time, you don't even get to see how many boxes you missed, and there's a good chance that you play through the entire game never knowing there are gems to get, or maybe you're smart enough to see them at the save screen, but you won't know how to get them. Keep in mind this is pre-internet walkthroughs. Talking about saving actually, you can save the game when you get one of these gems, and when you enter a bonus stage. Entering a bonus stage is done by getting three tokens which are hidden in the boxes in most of the levels. So, if you can't get into one of the bonus stages and you can't get any gems, you can't save the game. At all. So, let's try and beat a game in one go. Oh, well, maybe that's not a good idea either, because if you're playing this game for the first time, it'll be really hard. And not being able to save makes the idea of getting a game over just that much scarier. Just imagine you get a game over on the final boss and you haven't saved the entire game through. Of course, this is a real doomsday scenario, and you'll probably get to save at least a couple of times throughout the game. But still, why not just make a menu with a save option in the overworld? Anyway, there's a couple of different kinds of stages that seem to be scattered around in the world map somewhat randomly. There's a little bit of build-up in the stage's settings, but it still feels a little bit random. You do start out with a bunch of jungle-based levels. Those levels are mostly seen in the early game and are generally rather easy. Even when you encounter them in later parts of the game, they don't seem as difficult as the other stages. The next step up is what I like to call the tribe stages. These also have a jungle theme still, but are clearly inhabited by some kind of people. They're also slightly more difficult than your normal jungle stages, but you probably shouldn't die on these, because if you do, you're in for a lot of trouble later on. The river stages is where difficulty starts to be really noticeable. Nothing too bad yet, but there are some jumps that require proper timing, and there's nowhere near as much room for error, because most of the stage is made out of water, which, in case you've never played a video game before, kills you. Then just the ruins. These are the hardest stages in the game. Even in the early game, these present a real problem for you, and later in the game, you may or may not go insane trying to complete these. Those are all the normal stages in the early game. But of course you also have special kind of stages which are not just about platforming. Like the stages where you have to run away from a boulder, Indiana Jones style. I must say these stages are quite difficult because the camera angle doesn't really change from how it normally would look in a normal stage. But rather than running away from the camera like you normally would, you're running towards the camera. So 
You can see everything that you already did perfectly clearly in the background, but the things that are coming up, the obstacles you have to jump over, you can't see until the very last moment. So you can't really react to what's going on. You have to memorize the layout of the stage and play accordingly. Next up, there's a couple of stages where you ride a warthog. These stages are much higher paced than the rest of the game. That's mostly because you're actually moving faster than you usually would, and you can't actually stop moving at all. And then there's the added effect of the corridors being smaller than usual. At least, it feels that way. I don't know if they really are, but it might just be a result of you moving so goddamn quickly compared to normally. But at the end of the day, it feels smaller and that's what matters. These stages are also really difficult because predicting movement from objects can be really misleading. Just like in the border stages, you have to remember the layout of the stage so that you know where you have to be at any given time, rather than reacting to what's happening on the screen. Then there's the boss battles. I can't say they really excite me at all, honestly. They are basic and easy and not even fun. They don't really feel like boss fights either. They're not build up in any way and they just kind of there. And when you move on, nothing seems to have changed either. Now that I think about it, that would maybe be how it would work in the real world. But as a game design decision, that's just poor game design. My favorite boss is Dr. Brio, and it's just because he has two phases. If that's what makes your most special boss fight so goddamn special, you've got work to do. So far, I'm rather mixed in my review of this game, but let's have something positive to change that. The music is pretty goddamn great. I like myself some big epic symphonic score in some games sometimes. But the real art of making music is making music that doesn't stand out and is just used as a tool to improve the mood of the levels of the game. Would you look at a texture out of the context of the game? Probably not. So why should music be any different? The music in this game by itself isn't anything special, but the way it fits in with the stages is really what blows me away. All around, if you really want to play this game, make sure you play it before playing any other Crash Bandicoot game, because this is by far the worst. I hope some of these issues will be fixed in the PS4 remake though. That being said, this still is a really fun game to play, and I'd still recommend you go get it and have a good amount of fun with it. But maybe, just maybe, you could start with Crash Bandicoot 2. It's not like there's any proper story you'll miss out on if you do so. Thanks for watching my in retrospect on Crash Bandicoot. It's been a while, I know. And lately I've had some real problems with the whole weekly upload thing, because I've been sick and I've been busy and well, life just gets in the way sometimes. So if you want to help me out, don't forget to leave a like below this video and subscribe if you haven't already. Until my next upload, which should be next week, you can click the thumbnail on the top to watch my top 10 Crash Bandicoot levels and the thumbnail on the bottom to watch my in retrospect on Pokemon Gold. Until the next time, I have been a vlogger, you have been awesome as always. Bye.